What's up, Dirty Cones? There is no sound, but check out Mike Stefano, Horrifying Things. He's got some funny stuff, period, but... Um, horrifying Things, that is the essay of uh, this Abysmus Eve um, podcast. Uh, Cody is with me, as always, my sidekick. <laughs> my Ed McMahon, if I were... I was going to say Johnny, Johnny Carson. You guys are like, who's Johnny Carson? He's an old dude, he's dead. Uh, he's been dead almost as long as I've been alive, so that makes him way dead. Ancient history, he might as well be um, Greek from the 4th century. So, <clears throat> I like parables, I like stories, I like songs, I like things that motivate and you know, give you a little positive message. And last night I was reminded, um, because I told someone that they were like a cute little bunny rabbit. And uh, they're like, ah, does that mean I'm not threatening or I'm, I'm non-violent or I'm safe and sound? Nobody's ever been hurt by a, a bunny. <clears throat> I stand that that is a false statement. Um, there's a movie called, uh, well, all right, so we'll skip, I go, all right, so the Wabbits from the, uh, Rabbid, Wabbids game, remember playing on PlayStation 2, they were very cute rabbits, but they were very dangerous, uh, the John Cusack movie that I'm not remembering, he had rabbits as the antagonist, um, <clears throat> and they were fuzzy little rabbits, um, in the movie uh, Summer School with Mark Harmon uh, when they're filming their <laughs> when they're filming their movie they had uh, killer rabbits eating there's a movie about giant rabbits alright so you get the point rabbits are not to me rabbits are just as dangerous you know you never know so um, Benicula <laughs> okay anyway um, so there's this, uh, all together album, um, Ani DeFranco and a bunch of awesome, the Indigo Girls and, um, all my favorite militant lesbian folk singers, uh, beautiful people singing about, you know, good stuff, doing Woody Guthrie songs. <clears throat> and the last song or uh, thing on the show is uh, a number called Till We Outnumber Them and it's about two rabbits and it's about these rabbits that are hanging out loving life you know out on the prairie the wind is blowing you know and <clears throat> at the same time as they're enjoying their time out they hear dogs and there's like a pack of dogs and they're like whoa, 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 you know all together and by some cosmic coincidence, the wind, you know, blows the dog, or blows the rabbit scent down towards the dogs, and the dog's like, mmm, I smell wabbits, you know, so that'd be very, very quiet. We're hunting wabbits, <laughs> you know. Elmer Fudd, beautiful, one-track-minded cone of all cones, other than Wile E. Coyote, uh, which I have seen a student tie a rock with the rope around it and then tie themselves with the rope and we're just about to throw the rock attached to the cone. <laughs> oh no. and if I remember right the rope was about eight feet uh, too short so it happened and well no it didn't happen because I stopped him but it almost happened <laughs> I'm sure I was going to lower down the rope. No, you were not going to lower down the rock. Just, you're okay. <clears throat> so, dogs are now chasing the rabbits, and the rabbits are ah, you know, and they're running this way and that way, and they're trying to get away, and they are having no luck. And they, you know, come down this holler, and there is a um, imp, uh, hollowed out tree. They jump into the tree. And the dogs, roar, roar, you know, and they're stuck in there. And the mom rabbit says to the dad rabbit, she says, I don't think we're going to make it out of here this time. 
and the dead rabbit looks at her and says, it's all right, we'll just stay here till we outnumber them. And that is the moral of the story. Um, I know you're like, what's he saying? All right, so I'll, I'll explain. never outnumbered I right uh, World War two uh, I believe it was the Battle of the Bulge and the army is totally surrounded by the Germans it looks bad and um, <clears throat> they asked for a surrender and he's like nuts you know and he's like I got him right where I want him <laughs> right? I mean because think about you you cage a tiger, it'll get, it'll be angry. You gotta leave somebody a way out. That's the the, the quote about being a, a good friend but a fair enemy, right? If you fight fair, even if they other people don't fight fair, it's okay. Why? Because you're doing the right thing. As long as you're doing the right thing, you'll be all right. But back, back to the point, um, you know, you're totally surrounded. Oh, we got them right where we want them. If help will come in one form or another, the answer is inside you. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a firm believer in the Calvary. Even though I have a lot of issues with uh, <coughs> what happened during the... Uh, Indian Wars, but eh, we won't get into that, you know, it's, it's what I was talking about, you gotta be biopic, or by understanding, or just an American, you know, or, you know, citizen of the planet, human being, <clears throat> good little cone. That's it. That's all you gotta do. I know. I, life is less complex than you think. So don't, uh, don't overanalyze. Analyze, but don't overanalyze. Everything in moderation. So, I hope you enjoyed the story. I love that story. It's a good story for me. Um, it kind of helped me with an <clears throat> issue I'm having at the moment. Uh, so, I don't know. I think wherever you're at, excuse me, you are a cone. And a cone is like a, a young monk, you know, getting ready to go. Or, or you're, you're at the monastery, you know, and you know what you want to do, so... You know, they're praying, they're meditating, they're breathing, they're drinking water, they're living a good life, right? You're treading and praying and thinking positive and working through and being the best cone that you can be. So, you know, that monastic lifestyle, um, one, it'll save you some money. Two, um... It's not a bad idea to start practicing early for that indoc lifestyle, <clears throat> you know. And if you look at everything not as a problem or a worry, not even a concern, you make it a um, what's the word I'm looking for? You make it a problem or a concern. I don't know, you make it a solution. You come up with something that'll fix it and uh, you don't worry about it because you're prepared for it. And by proper pre uh, proper preparation, uh, like G.A. Joe says, knowing is half the battle. So the other half of the battle is preparing. And then, you know, the actual doing. But, uh, go Joe. Go Joe. Um... 
the cartoons were much better in my time frame with the G.I. Joe. The movies were... Uh, <clears throat> I've definitely seen worse movies. <laughs> um, they weren't bad. Well, they, they weren't that bad. We'll go with that since they killed everybody in the second movie. Like, come on. All right, I'll quit complaining. <laughs> so, um, train hard, love life, be good to everybody. Um, and observe more and judge less. Oh, yeah.